Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. Today we have a special guest, Mr. Gary Chambers is here with us. And he's going to be, um, actually he's running for state senate. State senate. State senate. And um, he's going to be talking about, you know, how sometimes politics and policy can affect sexual health and wellness. So I'm basically going to turn over the, um, the platform to him and let him introduce himself and basically tell him all of these great things that he has planned for the city of Baton Rouge. Well, first of all, thank you for having me uh, for this conversation. I know this is probably uh, different for a political candidate. Too, <laughs> of course. But for me, I'm about reaching people where they are. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Gary Chambers. I'm from born and raised in Baton Rouge from the Glen Oaks area. Um, and I got into activism and advocacy kind of by accident. Mm -hmm. I was a small business owner here. Uh, publisher of the Rouge Collection and attempted to uh, expand my business and learn that ultimately it was more difficult for young black people in business than it was for other groups of people. Oh yes. And finding that out <clears throat> kind of got active with uh, trying to figure out what are the problems and how do we fix them and then found out about uh, the different layers of how our government operates and what I think our government has not been taken care of for us as a community. Right. Um, and so uh, anybody who's followed me for a period of time knows that I've been active for the last four or five years really addressing issues from police violence to uh, equity and contracts and uh, inclusion. Black people make up 58% of the city of Baton Rouge, 48% of the parish, and 33% of the state of Louisiana. Wow. Um, and so when you look at those numbers and you recognize the percentage of us that exist within these communities and you look at the resources that come to our communities, yeah. Um, we've been starved for a long time and then blamed for why we're starving. Wow. Um, and so I'm running because I want to change that and do something about it to create a new, uh, new outcomes for our community. Okay. Well, I've been following you for a while. When I say a while, I mean a, a while. Um, I found out about you through the Rouge Collection um, and reading the articles, basically, which you spotlighting a lot of the businesses and stuff like that. Um, and recently in may um we had some legislation that was passed and for a long time i would never cross into politics because sometimes with certain professions you know i always say well i have my own personal views when it comes down to politics and policy so i'm not gonna mix sexual health and wellness with politics but in may something huge happened in our state and i was like okay, at this point, I'm understanding why I have to advocate for what I believe in because now some of the policies that are being passed are directly affecting women, Correct. which directly affects me and my following and the people that I care about. Because sometimes we have this thing where, okay, well, this doesn't necessarily, I don't have nothing to do with this. I don't have nothing to do with this, but in May, it was a big slap in the face. And we were actually in Disney when it was going on and I was calling back here. And so many people in Baton Rouge had no idea about the legislation that had been passed. And I'm talking about the heartbeat bill where um, basically the government is taking control of our reproductive rights. So um, I'm a pro-choice candidate in this race mm -hmm. and the only pro-choice candidate in this race uh, for me a man should never make a decision about the autonomy of a woman's body. Mm -hmm. uh, our state legislature is majority men, and they voted for some legislation that basically tells a woman that a, once a heartbeat is detected that they can't have an abortion. Um, I don't think that people get to the decision of, of having an abortion easily. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not something that people say, oh, I just want to do this, right? Right. And so understanding that we should not be restricting anybody's access to health care. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the bill is so egregious that it doesn't even consider uh, rape or incest. Correct. Right? And uh, the other person in the race voted to support that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would never have voted for that because I have a nine-year-old daughter. And I could not imagine if she was 14 or 15 years old and someone violated her to force my child to have that, that baby if she didn't want to, right? And mm -hmm. I, there, there are people who believe that they get to make that decision for somebody else. And I just don't think it's right. That's just, that's just a personal stance. Right. And for me, um, I, I, I can no longer have children. 
So a lot of times people feel like, well, that don't have anything to do with me, but I have three daughters. And I'm just like, okay, I have three daughters and I'm a pro-choice person as well. And sometimes I get a lot of flack for being down south and being pro-choice. But I just feel like you should make a, a, a decision for yourself. People should have that option. I'm gonna just say it like that. I, I made this comment to um, somebody who was pro-life. Mm -hmm. if, if a mother and father uh, conceived a child and they went to the doctor and the doctor found out that that child uh, potentially could be born autistic or that child could be born with Down syndrome mm -hmm. and the doctor had the authority to terminate the pregnancy without the permission of that couple, you wouldn't agree with that? You would not agree with that. So if the doctor doesn't get the ability to make the decision for your family if your child potentially will be born with a disability, mm -hmm. then no one else should be able to make that decision for your family. On the other side, if you determine if the woman is about to con has conceived a child that may be autistic or Down syndrome or whatever, that they don't want to go through with that pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I think that we get we spend too much time worrying about what happens in other people's bedrooms. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really care who you sleep with, uh, the outcome of what you who you sleep with. That's not my business. And I think the, the minute that we get out of people's personal lives in that oh, way, yeah. the, the minute we begin to move our community forward on the real issues that matter. Um, this is a, a very sticking point, e even for people in the, in the Christian faith, right? I'm an right. ordained minister. Mm -hmm. uh, most people would say, well, if you're a minister, how can you support this? Because biblically, right, mm -hmm. uh, we choose to be Christians. Mm -hmm. It's not forced upon us. Correct, okay? it is choice. And so if I make that choice to be a Christian, then I make that choice to abide by whatever my beliefs are. Correct. Government is not supposed to be a, a religious entity. Right. Separation. Nor are our laws should nor should our laws be governed by our religion. Correct. Okay. Furthermore, in the Bible, uh, when the people of God asked God for a king, he said they didn't need a king. Mm -hmm. They came back to God and said, We want a king. He said, You don't need a king. God gave them a king because they continued to ask for a king. Wow. So if God won't step over the will of people, why should I go? Come on. And and that's that's that was my position on it. My thing is, you know, let people have the choice to make a decision for themselves. Even when you say biblically, we are free will agents. That's right. God never forces himself on us. He gives us the ability to make choice for ourselves. And I have a daughter in college that say UNO. I have a daughter in high school. I have a daughter in middle school. Who's to say, you know, anything could happen? The last thing I want is my children to be punished. And I'm going to say punished with a baby. Because the thing is, if you bring a baby into the world, you should want it. You you should have that uh, the, the desire to want it. But if you feel like this is not what I'm ready for at this point in my life, you should have that choice to say, you know what? This is not what I, I want for myself at this point in my life. And I don't think you should be damned to hell for it. And I don't think you should go to prison for it. <laughs> I think that there's going to be a lot of people in heaven that we thought was going to hell. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> a lot of people in hell we thought was going to heaven. That's and right. I think that we should get out of the business of trying to legislate people's personal lives. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also think that when you deal with this issue, that Louisiana talks about, we phrase the word pro-life. Come on. When in truth, we're really pro-birth. Um, we're ranked number 49 in the economy, number 48 in education, number 50 in crime, number 43 in fiscal stability, number 45 uh, in infrastructure, and 50 overall. Our state is ranked dead last in the nation, okay? So if you rank last, how then are you pro-life? Because the quality of life for the children that we are forcing people to, 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 to have is not high. Come on. Okay, so unless we're going to improve our education system, improve equal pay for equal work for women, raise our minimum wage, improve the quality of life for the people and the residents of this, this state and this city, then we should stay out of the business of trying to tell people you should have a baby and make sure that when people have children, that we give them the best possibility to live out their wildest dreams right here in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Too often people choose to leave our state Come on. because we have antiquated uh, backwoods, laws and people who uh, have never been outside the borders of this state to understand that there's a whole new world out there hmm. uh, where you can't be in the last of every major positive category and at the top of every negative. negative category and believe that we're doing a good job. The reality is we're doing a terrible job and so if we see an increase in people not wanting to have children, 
Part of that may be because of the quality of life that we give them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't believe that we're a pro-life state. I think we're a pro-birth state. We tell people, have the baby, but we ain't gonna do nothing to help you with the baby when you have it. Okay, so we know that early voting is going on right now. And can you explain to everyone why is it so important for them to go out there and cast their votes early? So early voting in Saturday, so you have, uh, what's today, Wednesday, my day's mm -hmm. running in. So you have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to early vote, mm -hmm. and then election day. Early voting is critical because you go early vote so that you don't have to wait to election day. The dog could get hit by a car, <laughs> your baby could get sick, uh -huh. uh, your tire could go flat, anything could happen. Anything. But today, you have an opportunity. Tomorrow, you have an opportunity. And so don't waste those opportunities and say, oh, I'm gonna wait till election day when we give you six other days besides election day to go vote. Right. For a candidate like me who doesn't have a whole lot of resources, it's important that the people who support the things that I support and want to create change in this community get out and early vote today. Mm -hmm. uh, if you support a candidate that's pro-choice, a candidate that's going to bring economic development and resources and health care to our community, I'm asking you to go vote for me today. I don't know when to the Twitter. <laughs> I need right. you to go today. I need you to bring your mama, your cousin, Amy and them, your baby, anybody you know that's registered to vote, go out and vote. And, and anybody who says, I don't care about voting, I would just say, every time you spend your money, you're paying taxes. Mm -hmm. And not voting is giving somebody else the ability to make a decision with your money. That's like saying, you married, right? Mm -hmm. And you show up at home, and your husband paying the light bill at the house next door. Come on. Because <laughs> that's what you're doing. You're paying taxes but you're allowing your neighbor to make a decision about what happens with your money. Right. And so I need you to go early vote. No matter who you're voting for, get active in the voting process and show up because this is how we make change. It may not seem important, um, but just as fast as, vote is no different than texting. It takes, it takes less time to send a text message than it does for you to go press a couple buttons and vote. Because yeah. that's all you're doing. The, the process is really simple. All you need is, um, your, it doesn't have to be a valid state ID because I know some people say state ID, some people say valid state ID. I just want to make sure that we give you have an ID when you go in there, then people are looking for your name and your address okay. if you're registered to vote. Um, if you're registered to vote, uh, get out and vote. If you're not registered to vote, register to vote. Uh, it's too late to vote in this election if you're not registered to vote, but you need to be registered for every election. And right. We need to vote in every election from the top of the ballot to the bottom. That is correct. You can well, speak on the uh, convicted felons and stuff like that. They know so there, there now is the opportunity also for people who were convicted felons that can get their right back to vote if you've been uh, out for five years and off papers. You can now go and, and register to vote. That's something that was not in place before uh, that you now have the ability to get registered to vote. All right. Gary Chambers, tell them where they can reach you at. Give them your social media handles because a lot of them are saying they don't know who you are. So, so I'm saying, okay, okay, this is Gary Chambers. So just spit it out. Let them know where they can find so you. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook at Gary Chambers. Um, my, my platform is uh, Do Good and Seek Justice, and we're going to heal the land. Healthcare access, it, it, healthcare access uh, economic development, academic achievement, and legislative justice. Uh, those are the things that we're going to go for uh, to make happen. But Gary Chambers on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, it's all the same. Okay. Well, one thing about me, you know that I'm going to always keep it 100 with you all and real recognize real. So, Mr. Chambers, of course, has my support. And I will be casting uh, my ballot for Gary Chambers. And it's a whole bunch of other people that, um, that that's going to be on that ballot. But I really need y'all to get out and vote. I really need y'all to... You know, take a stand. Like, let, let's start making change happen. A lot of times we all say, well, I'm leaving here, I'm leaving here. But the thing is, we still here now. Let me say this. Mm -hmm. If everybody leaves, you always going to be watering somebody else's grass. Grow in the field that you're planted in. Wow. Yeah, because we're really the majority. Mm -hmm. We are. But they oh, hold on, I have thing. somebody that's saying something on here. Okay, she says to be on the safe side, make sure it's a valid ID. I've worked the elections, and if it's not valid, they will turn you around. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for giving us that information. Um, again, y'all make sure y'all check out his magazine. Um, this is a digital magazine, so that means that you don't have to actually pay for it, but it's a lot of great information. Um, if you want to support him, um, how can, if they wanted to support you monetarily? You can go to changesforchange.com and make a contribution, sign up for emails. 
Uh, we need people to help us knock on doors and volunteer and mm -hmm. call people. Um, so if you're willing to volunteer for the campaign over the next uh, 10 days, we got 10 days to election day. Okay. Uh, there's so much. I'm ready for it to be over. Oh, uh, but there's also it's work. Uh, a lot of work that we have left to do. So if you can help us in any way, uh, please show up. Uh, and let me tell you what the district is. From Zachary, uh, Baker, Stylenville, Allison, Glen Oaks, uh, Forest Heights, Sharon Hills, Greenwood, uh, Villa Del Rey, Park Forest, Monticello, Black Sherwood, White Sherwood, <laughs> all the way uh, to I-12. So from Zachary to I-12 is the district. If you live in any of those areas or you know people that live in any, in any of those areas, call them today. Allison, my husband and I, we both from Allison. Okay. Allison, stand up, Allison. Come on, we need y'all. We need y'all. Everybody we always asks us where we from. We from right here. And back in 2016 when the flood happened, I did a video uh, advocate for the landfill for the landfill that's in um, Alston to be closed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I advocated for the landfill in Alston to be closed because there was an empty landfill right down the street and we continue to pollute the people in that community. Yes, you know. and our people, they suffer bad health-wise. Health a lot of people don't realize that it's hard for a woman to even be able to carry a child of uh, miscarriage rate because extremely high. Correct. Sinuses, like um, the list goes on and on. So I'm, I'm very familiar with, um, with all of the issues that they having with the dump, and that was one of the reasons that we did not buy a house in Alson, was because we didn't. You the know, people in Alson struggled to even sell their property mm -hmm. because you know who wants to move in and live next to a landfill. That's correct. Well, again, I want to thank you for coming thank out you. and you know blessing us with all of this great information, y'all. It's time for us to get active. Make sure you exercise your right to vote. Make sure you contact your family and friends and let them know all of the great information that Gary Chambers shared with us today. And let them know how this candidate is going to benefit us, okay? Because sometimes we go by name recognition when we go to the ballots. We have a bad habit as people because we know the name, we click on it. But what I want you to do is start doing some research on your candidates and see how they can benefit you living here in this great city of Baton Rouge, okay? So with that being said, y'all know if you want to reach me, my website is www.dppgstore.com. Um, again, he is on uh, Instagram, Facebook. He's giving you all of his handles. I'm going to go back on here and type everything in once I end this live so that you will have the, um, the access to all of his platforms. So y'all be blessed. Have a great day. And thank you for joining us on Sex Talk with Sharonda today.